What's going on? YouTube Metal Complex here, and today I've got another amazing custom knife to share with you guys. This is the Ray Laconico Full Custom EZC, or EZ Carry. Uh, this is the fourth take on the beginning of this uh, video because I literally have messed that up four times, and I know Spirited is laughing at me right now. Um, I just got off the phone with him. I, you guys saw the custom Yorkie review that I did yesterday. Well, I'm actually doing these in, re in my time. I'm doing these reviews back to back because I had some information I wanted to get from him and I wanted it all fresh in my head when I was uh, doing this. But anyways, we were joking about, I had just recently done a review on the production EWC or the everywhere carry done by Monterey Bay knives, uh, in collaboration with Ray Laconico. And I screwed it up in that. <laughs> I have such a hard time with that, but I've got this figured out now. EZC. This is a custom EZC. I've also done the drop, uh, the review on the drop version of this knife. This is the full custom version. Very fortunate to have this in my possession right now. That is, of course, thanks to Spirited Whiskey, who is a name you guys probably uh, are becoming increasingly familiar with. Much like Shaker and Jeff and Kyle, um, these guys uh, are, are so generous in that they have lent me some of their um, their, their babies, you know, their, their amazing knives so that, um, that I can review, uh, them on the channel, bring, bring them to you guys. And at the same time, it helps my channel grow. So I, I just am infinitely appreciative of that. Thank you so much. Um, and, uh, speaking of that, if you're enjoying my content, of course, if you'd like to support me, I do have a Patreon. You can find the link in the description as well as Amazon affiliate links to a lot of the stuff you guys like. So if you're watching my channel, um, like I used to watch Jim Skelton's channel because I have the itch, the itch, um, I've provided links to some things you guys might be interested in, some popular EDC knives, uh, both expensive and inexpensive, some EDC items, some tools, some knife maintenance stuff. There's literally stuff down there for everybody. So anyways, let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, this is gonna be another laid back um, sort of overview because this is a custom knife and with this uh, custom uh, label comes custom prices, which is gonna knock it out of um, the parameters of uh, desire for a lot of people. It's just expensive. So we're just gonna be taking a look at it today and talking about it a little bit. Overall length, a little bigger than the uh, Yorkie we did yesterday, coming in at just under seven inches. That's quite surprising. I was convinced that it was gonna be over seven. I don't do these measurements off camera because I don't want them to change my opinions of it. I wanna just experience it first and then measure it on camera. Um, so about 6.8, 6.9 inches overall. From tip to scale on the blade, you're looking at just a hair under three inches, which is awesome. I, I don't think there's a way you can measure this knife and make it three inches or more. That's great for people who live in an area that doesn't limit you on a knife that's deployable with one hand or that, that locks out, but is like, eh, it has to be under three inches. This knife's gonna work for you because it's under three inches. Cutting edge is coming in at about 2.75 inches overall. So that's great. How about some size comparisons? We got the camera framed up correctly today, so the rat one is gonna fit. Ontario Rat One uh, coming in at about 8.6 inches overall. So you can see they're quite a bit bigger uh, than the uh, EZC. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? PM2 is coming in at 8.3 inches overall. So you can see there, still quite a bit bigger. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in at eight inches overall. So you can see there, again, quite a bit bigger. How about up against the Spyderco Para? three, Para three coming in closer in size. It's very similar in overall length to the Para three. Para three at seven and a quarter, and this just a hair under seven inches. So I think fans of the Para three, you're gonna be a little bit closer there in your size preference. And how about up against the Yorkie, since I've got it right here, uh, up against the uh, custom Yorkie. Yorkie's a little bit smaller there coming in at, what did we measure it at yesterday? Uh, Yorkie comes in at six inches on the dot. So there you go, three quarters of an inch, or I'm sorry, um, about a, almost an inch longer there uh, than the Yorkie. So how's the action on this guy? So the uh, Easy C is running on bearings, definitely. Our uh, Mr. Uh, Whiskey, Spirited Whiskey, has uh, let me know that he has been on the inside of this guy and it is running on bearings. The action is amazing. It is exactly... Um, what I remember, if not just a little, you know, custom knives have a little bit more of a, like a feeling like somebody was in there polishing surfaces before it all went together. And that likely is the case. You know, I say that because I have reviewed and handled the uh, drop version of this, which is the production version that was made by, 
Was it also Monterey Bay knives? They do a great job. You know, those of you who are gonna spend between 150 and 250 on a production version of a custom knife, um, rest assured, you're still getting a quality piece. It's just not quite, it just doesn't feel quite the same as the full custom. The custom always feels a little bit better, and that is the case here, um, not just with Ray Laconico knives, with everybody. You know, 99% of the time, the custom just feels a little bit better. Does it feel four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, $900 better, I, that's up to the individual buying it, which is why I do overviews on custom knives and not reviews because I can't review, I can't, I can't openly recommend an, an extremely expensive knife to everybody. That's, that makes me look silly and I'm not going to do that. Um, but, uh, we're just going to talk about the design of the knife and you know what I think of it really. That's kind of how I like to do these. Um, but uh, the action is amazing. The detent is perfect. It has what everybody loves, and that's that smooth hydraulic feeling coming down. It's not really a drop shut action, but that's mostly due to how, you know, the blade is, it's got a fairly small, thin blade. It's not a heavy blade. It can definitely be shaken into place if you keep your finger off that lock bar, which I wasn't giving you the best example of, but it'll definitely, definitely shake shut. Absolutely no friction on the inside there. Um, perfect detent, no uh, detent lash or anything like that. Um, I would still, I would call this medium to medium heavy, which is perfect on a smaller knife. You have a, it's a little tiny bit pointy, but it really, it really um, accentuates this area for your finger to rest. And it feels so natural uh, firing this guy. It's that perfect in between of push button and light switch. And it just feels ever so natural. Um, this is also a knife that uh, people who like to sit on their couch like me and just flip their, like like you guys doing right now, you've got your favorite knife in your hand and you're watching this and you're just flipping it over and over again and now you're laughing out loud because it's like, oh, he's breaking the fourth wall. Yeah, um, that's uh, this is very friendly. Uh, so people who like to do that, like me, um, you're going to be really happy with this. That You can do this all day, no problem. There's no double clutch when you get your finger up underneath this flipper tab, so it's very easy to just do this over and over and over again. I love it. Very, very satisfying. How about weight on this guy? We are looking at, if you look on the inside, two solid pieces of titanium. Um, it uh, actually, I think it's gonna be, I moved the Yorkie way out of the way because I don't wanna drop that guy. These two are about the exact same thickness. So if you're comparing it with like the PM2, it's gonna be thinner overall than a PM2. So very, uh, you know, not, the reason I'm showing you that is it's not super thick titanium or a super thick blade. You're coming in at a very reasonable 2.86 ounces, almost exactly an ounce an inch just on cutting edge alone. Um, so that's perfect. That's going to meet ratios there. Listen, carry profile in sky, how much blade you're getting, um, you know, having the, the fidget factor, having the cool factor, the classy factor. I mean, he just, it's not, I'm not the first person to say this. He just knocked it out of the park with this guy. I mean, this is fitting into so many, we live in this world where like, we we take we, we take pictures of everything and put it on Instagram. And like, while we all have our own individual tastes, you guys know what I'm talking about when I, you see the picture of like the wallet and uh, it's like a minimalist wallet and then he's got like a simple, he or she has a simple sleek pen and then they have this like, really simple, elegant looking gentleman's folder, right? And it's usually a slip joint or maybe something. But I see this guy in there every now and then, whether it's the production version through a Monterey Bay Knives or it's a full custom, and it just, it looks nice. You know, that person looks equipped for the day, but at the same time, it's like, ah, it's such a refined, you know, and there's a, a certain level of like snobbiness or assumed snobbiness sometimes that comes with that. And I don't care what type of person you are. If you are a snob or you're not a snob, whether you enjoy that stuff for this reason or that, or you don't, it doesn't matter. What I'm trying to say is, is this is a knife that caters to a lot of people, <laughs> both in terms of function and aesthetics. It's just nice. It's also utilizing, of course, being full custom knife made in the United States, premium materials. The blade is made out of CTS XHP. Those of you who have watched my video on my favorite steels know that XHP is one of my very favorite steels of all time. Very, very good edge retention, pretty good toughness. Um, definitely a stainless uh, quality uh, or stainless steel, um, stainless composition. Um, really, really great stuff. Uh, Mr. Laconico, this is something that uh, Spirited had to let me know of, is also a master of uh, blade grinds. So um, whether you start off with a really thick blade or you start off with a medium or thin, you know, he uh, he's able to get the edge down to a point where it's very, very thin, 
very slicey without sacrificing the um, the intended strength of um, of the design. So we've got a flat here that runs out about 80% the length of the blade, and you've got reasonable thickness carried all the way down to uh, the tip there. So, I mean, I don't know what you'd be doing with this knife where you'd have to worry too much about the integrity of the blade, but if you find yourself in a situation like that, you can worry less about this blade than your typical ultra thin. I mean, like to use an example, um, I would trust the blade on the Laconico a lot more than I would trust the blade on the Open L. How dare you speak ill of the Open L? Oh, yeah, people always get upset with me when I talk crap on the Open L. <laughs> Sorry, I just did. Um, speaking of like the minimalist look, you know, everybody has a different, it, it, that, that's kind of irony when we talk about the minimalist look on a knife that costs a lot of money. Ray Laconico custom knives, between uh, at least the uh, Easy C and the Yorkie run anywhere from $700 to $1,200. Um, this is a more planar, uh, uh, planar version of this knife, so I think it's gonna be more around the seven, dollars $800 range. I could be wrong about that, but we talk about the minimalist look on something with a price tag like that, and it's kind of an eye roll, like it's like oh, irony, because the, the Open L not only has the minimalist look, but it also has the min minimalist price tag. And I, I listed the Open L, uh, it's ridiculous to, to have this knife on a, uh, custom overview of the uh, Yorkie or the uh, Easy C, but I just want to make my point here. I had this knife listed as one of the most overrated knives of all time, and people got so upset with me, and they were like, "How can you say that about a ten dollar knife?" And you're probably right. It's probably stupid of me to have that opinion, but it's just I, it's just underwhelming, and it has the whole minimalist thing. But I I like having the minimalist look, um, but not so much the minimalist feel, and I I I. Maybe it's the snob in me, but I like having a knife that feels a little more expensive despite both this and the Open L being able to cut. Um, I like the simple look. I like the elegant look, but at the same time, I also like the fact that it locks, uh, the fact that I can manipulate with one hand, the fact that I can deploy it with a flipper tab. Um, and then outside of the realm of uh, convenience and utility, I just like that it's fun to play with. I like that it's fun to experience. I like the, the pride of of, of um, experiencing something that I, I know is incredibly well made and it is durable for the, the reasonable parameters that you would use the knife in. And at the same time, it has this exclusivity to it. You know, something I always talk about in custom knife videos, some people can't understand why would you spend so much money on something that cuts just as well, sometimes not as good as something that a knife like the Open L that costs so much less. People will, will, whether or not you agree with it, people will pay for exclusivity, pride of ownership. That is a thing. You can't stop it. Uh, people who want to buy a Mercedes or they want to buy a Ferrari, a Lamborghini. It's not necessarily 100% all about performance. That's a huge uh, part of it, but it's also just about, you know, craftsmanship, the time that went into it, and the definitely the exclusivity of owning said item. It's not easy to get your hands on a Ray Laconico custom knife. They're very popular right now. You mix those two things together, you create demand. And not everybody agrees with the fact that demand should exist for said item, but it does nonetheless. So that's just, that's a thing, you know, absolutely. 13 minutes into the video. Guys, the blade is ground perfectly. It is a simple drop point or spear point blade with an amazing grind that comes down to what I would call a laser beam, absolutely. Nice tip, this is gonna be a very, very functional EDC style uh, blade. This is one of those knives where I, I truly believe it doesn't need jimping up top. I'm not gonna need to lock into it like that. It does have an area right here that you could use as a, as a single knuckle choil. You know, if you have to do some delicate work, I appreciate that. It's definitely not a full choke up position, but I definitely can comfortably get my finger right there. You're just gonna have to be cognizant about where you put it, you know, so you don't run it up on the blade. Flipper tab can feel a little bit pointy on the sides, but I don't know that I'm really gonna put my hands in a situation where I'm gonna be running into that all the time. I mean, down here, I'm really just running up underneath the bottom of it, and it's been nicely rounded off right here. It's really just these points that are a little pointy. Other than that, though, there's no sharp edges to speak of. This has been nicely rounded off all the way around, slight contouring, and you have that nice little handle fuller, I guess is what I'm gonna call it. I'm sure people are like, you can't call it a fuller unless it's on the blade. Well, I don't know, correct me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it looks nice. I know that he has different uh, versions of this uh, available. You can get, uh, you know, one that's not fuller. To, and I'm sure there are, like the Yorkie, I'm sure um, you have other options, like with the, the pocket clip, you know, and the, see, he's got this orange, uh, this eggshell texturing, which is like my favorite thing in the whole world, probably available. This has a simple tumbling, a dark tumbling on it, more of a matte tumbling, and it looks really nice too. You know, whatever your, whatever your preference, I'm sure that there are options if you are, 
I'm somehow able to get on his books. And maybe, you know, it depends on when you're watching this video. Maybe they may be more or less available, but there are different versions. From what I've seen, the, the differences between knives like uh, from Mr. Laconico are subtle, um, but uh, there, there are differences for people who have those preferences. You can see here we do have a nice T8 simple domed off pivot. Um, and then we have screws down here that I believe are actually T6. I wish it was like the, um, the Yorkie and they had the T8. I just love it when they're T8 down here. Um, and maybe that'll change, you know, in the future. I don't know. Um, but uh, a spirit had said he didn't have any trouble getting into this, and I would imagine you guys would either. You have a, a backspacer back here that looks like it's made out of G10, and then we've got two, just two body screws, which is great. The pocket clip is just, for a knife like this, is just like the most perfect pocket clip. It fits so well. It's literally the same exact profile and shape of the as the handle is just shrunk down and it's just perfect. It's, it's even contoured. This thing is so easy to get in and out of the pocket. It's just big enough where I'm not feeling like I'm worried about dropping it. You know, it's just perfect. That pocket clip is great. Um, the knife carries with just a little bit sticking out just that much, which I mean, some could argue that's a pretty hefty percentage of the overall uh, knife, but it, it's, it's not enough. I mean like that sticking up out like this, it could be anything. It doesn't look like a knife. You know, this is kind of a nice, sleek, low-profile carry, lightweight. The, the profile, even with the flipper tab, you know, is not one that creates a problem with carry. Um, it's just great. This is just such a, like the Yorkie, it's very easy to carry. It's very user-oriented. You know, Ray LeConico obviously sat down and was like, okay, there are people who want functional, like, precision cutting tools. But at the same time, they really care about the weight and profile of it. Right, so how do I put that together and then cater to people who like an ultra simplistic look but still want that pride of ownership? And then he made this and he made a whole bunch of other stuff that just nails that exactly. And that's why these are so popular. I mean, not everybody looks at a Ray Laconico design and goes, that's for me. But it's no surprise that so many people do. I mean, it just, I look at that and I'm like, God dang, that's just so nice, you know? Like, I always use cars, you know, like uh, when I when I think of a Bentley, right? Super, just like precision. A lot of people look at that and they say that's needless luxury. All right, needless luxury exists in this world, guys. And we, those of us who can afford it, great. Those those I don't want to say us. I can't. Those people who can't afford it, good for them. I I will openly admit that I drool over stuff like that, knowing that I can't afford it. Those kind of have a simple look, but at the same time, they have little features that are indicative of ultra high-end luxury like they do kind of a simple look on the body but then they have a really elegant looking grill really elegant looking hood ornament the wheels things like that without going so extreme not like lamborghini extreme you know it kind of that's what it makes me think of it's like it's elegant and low profile but if you look like the details are there and they're nice you know now you a lot of people are like you you're going to talk about minimalism and then you're going to talk about a bentley <laughs> you're right probably a bad example but um that's what it makes me think of. This is nice. You know, you're looking for a church knife. You're looking for an office carry knife. You're looking for a cocktail party knife. You're just looking for something that's just a dedicated EDC, but you're ready to spend the money on a higher end piece. You want USA manufacturing, all that stuff. Uh, you can't go wrong with these. And honestly, for a custom knife, I'm not going to argue with those prices. For most people, that's going to be way outside of the realm of sane, but I'm not going to, for a full custom knife, you know, for what he paid for this around $800, something like that, I think I'm right. I'm um, sorry if I'm wrong, but anything under a thousand, you know, for something like this, in my opinion, just based on my experience with custom knives and knives in general, yeah, I can't argue with that. That's awesome. I think it's going to be getting your hands on one or finding one in the first place that's really going to be the issue. Very, very cool stuff. Uh, Spirited, thank you so much for letting me take a look at this and the Yorkie. Guys, that's going to be pretty much it for today's uh, review uh, or today's overview. Um, thanks again. We'll show these both right here back to back just because they're so sweet. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more content coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.